All right, so in this video, I'm going to be casting a bangle with some cast in place faceted sapphires. This is a piece I'm doing as a commission. I've been asked to do this by somebody who has all of this scrap silver that she wants to melt down and be turned into bangles. And some of the stones that we've pulled out of these pieces of jewelry, we're gonna be casting in place. Um, I'm also going to be adding in a few of my own sapphires just to balance it out a little bit. Um, I'm going to be doing two videos, so there'll be a part one and a part two because I'm casting two bangles and I thought I'd show you the two ways you can do it. The first way is using a big vertical flask and another way of doing it is using a big horizontal flask. So I'll show you how to do both of those. The bangles I'm casting are these. So I just found the, these at op shops. Um, I could carve them out of wax if I had something very specific in mind. Um, but I found them at op shops and they're pretty perfect for what I want. Uh, so we'll start off in this video by using the vertical flask. Okay, let's begin as always. So your male side of the flask, lip down, pack from behind. Tack and powder the surface or whatever you use as a little barrier between the two halves, whether that be tack and powder or just plain baking flour. got my object. I'm deciding to place it in where the thickest parts are at the top going down to the narrowest parts just to help with that flow and you can also see that this has an undulated halfway point so it's an undulated bangle so I need the clay to come up and meet those under parts I just push the clay around to get it up where I need it just up underneath that bangle part so I need that support all the way around It doesn't matter that there's these dips because your opposite side is going to have bumps to fit in those dips. So it doesn't matter. Let's put the female on top. making sure it fits inside your flask. It only just fits. Loose crumbly bits of clay first. All right, get your object out. So if you have a look at this bangle, it gets quite thin here. Um, and a little bit thinner in these spots, but this spot here I'm particularly worried about. Um, so if I was to cast this bangle as it is right now, an exact replica of this, I have a suspicion that it wouldn't cast. The metal would cool down too quickly before it got to any, like it wouldn't fill the whole bangle. It would cool down too quickly um, and not form properly. But if we want to have a version of this, but a thicker version, we can do that in the clay. Got to try and remember how this bangle went in. It's always a bit tricky. Not like that. <laughs> All right, so that's it there. So we're gonna make this bangle thicker. 
which means we're going to push this bangle impression deeper into both halves of this flask so that your silver version will be a thicker, deeper version. Which is why it's really important to make sure the backs of your flasks are flush. Because as you're pushing on that clay, you don't want it to give way. If this was a concave, then the clay would just give way and you'd have a big mess when you cast. So this way, it's a lot cleaner. And you have that clay being supported. I'm actually using my full body weight to try and push this deeper. Try not to touch the clay itself because wherever your fingers leave an impression, silver's going to rush to fill that. Okay, pushed in a bit deeper on this side. Got to try and remember which way it fits in. Flip it over and push it in deeper on this side as well. Again, I'm using my full body weight to try and push that bangle deeper. Sometimes I'll use um, a tool to try and help me. Whoop, and try not to slip. So the part I'm most concerned about is the really thin section, which is around here. So I'm going to focus most of my pushing on that area to make sure it is nice and thick. Let's pull that out. So that's a deeper impression now. Fantastic. So let's do our sprue hole and funnel, which is just this. I could have had this bangle impression higher so the silver didn't have as far to travel. Sometimes that can really help with your um, casting um, in the sense that the silver's really hot when it's being forced into that impression but I think it'll be fine for this one. But if for some reason this didn't cast properly, I would then do it again, but moving that bangle up higher. So I'm using the back of the paintbrush just to clean up those loose bits of clay. You wanna make sure your funnel and sprue hole are always nice and clean with no loose bits of clay. You don't want that loose silk that loose clay following your silver in to your object <sighs> creates all sorts of nasty things like porosity and weak points or it can actually just stop your um, your casting from forming at all now I'm going to resize the bangle the bangle currently is a bit too big for my clients wrist so I'm very lucky to have access to a 3D printer. And I asked my partner to 3D print me a bangle in the size required, which is 61 millimeters diameter, inside diameter. Uh, if you don't have access to a 3D printer like I do, um, if you have a bangle sizing kit, you can use those. So you should be able to buy them from any jewelry supplier. Now I'm getting this bangle size and I'm going to use it like a, like a cookie cutter. All right, made a bit of an impression. Now I'm going to go in there and cut out. those excess bits so that I will have a bangle that is the size of my client's wrist. With a bangle like this that's um, 
undulating. It's a little bit trickier because I'm gonna have to go in and blend and blend where I've cut out this extra clay. If it was a flat bangle, it'd be a lot easier. I'm gonna use this embossing tool and I'm going to clean up where I've carved out the new size. If I'm worried about the inside of the bangle where it would sit on the, the wrist, I can clean up that vertical wall with something flat. You've got to be gentle and careful. See how I'm pushing that clay down, smoothing it down, so that I've got less filing work to do on the bench. And then I have to come through and clean that up. So the cleaner your the cleaner your mold is, the less work you have to do on the bench. But sometimes you sort of got to weigh up if it's worth the effort in the clay to save time on the bench, or if it would just be more efficient to clean something up on the bench. Now we've got to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, I've got both my halves have an inside diameter of 61 millimeter now and they're nice and cleaned up. The fun part of placing stones now. Some of her diamonds are just too little to cast in place. So I find one millimeter diamonds are too small, uh, but you can kind of get away with 1.3 millimeters, so you know, one pointers. You can get away with one pointers. Get our pawpaw out. Let's start off with the big stone. Bit of pawpaw on the table of that stone. It doesn't matter which side I put them on. I'm actually going to be putting them on both. Uh, let's say I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to have the three stones next to each other. So I'll just place them there for now. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll have a diamond next to it. No, no, no. I'll keep them all together. So at the moment, I'm not doing much other than putting them in. Let's move that out of the way. Okay, I want to put grains with these stones. So I've got my embossing tools and they have a variety of different balls at the end of them. So a larger stone will require larger beads and a smaller stone, smaller beads. So I think maybe that's about right for that centre stone. But what I might do is have it that these stones are, they're sharing a grain. All right, so that's ideal where you can, the stone is covering half of the hole. That makes sense. So the little impression you've made that are the grains, you want the stone to be sitting half over them. That means that when the grains are cast, the silver is going to be half over the stone, holding that stone in place, which is perfect. That's what you want. Now that the stone is in the position I want it to be and I need it to stay there, I'm going to use my tweezers 
to just get on the culé of that stone and give it a little press and I just am pressing that stone into the clay oops and they're slippery okay so we've got that stone really close up against that other big stone well, let's put that grain in there bring that stone back into position that's going to be sitting about there again pushing on the back of the stone on that pointy part it doesn't have to be much so it's quite important to remember that you need to be able to see the girdle of these stones if you can see the girdle, it means the silver is able to grab a hold of it and hold that stone in place. If you can't see the girdle, if the girdle is in the clay, it means you've pushed the stone too deep. And that means the silver's got nothing to grip onto. It's just going to hold onto the pointy part of this stone. And then once you've cast it, your stone's just going to pop out of that silver because there's not enough metal holding the stone in place. Needs to be able to wrap around and slightly over that girdle. Can you guys see that? Can you see those little indents I've made? They're going to become grains that hold those stones securely in place. Now I'm going to do the same thing with more stones. I've now placed stones in both halves. I'm just trying to show you. I've also added a few little feature dimples. So the dimples on here, but in the silver version, there'll be little bumps, cute little bumps. Now all I have to do is add air vents and I can cast this. Nice and open. Let's close this up and cast. Using these clips because the flask does not stay closed otherwise just giving it a bit of a press make sure these two clay halves are snugly fit together so we don't have leakage being careful not to close my air vent ready I've got a bunch of the client's metal ready to melt down and if I need more of it I've got it set over here so I can grab it easily. I've also made sure to pull off all of the parrot class and bolt class from the chains because they have little metal springs inside of them, steel springs that you can't melt down and it'll get caught in your metal and cause all sorts of problems. So you will have to pull these class apart to remove the steel spring before you can melt them. I've also got some borax handy because this metal might not be very clean and I might need to clean it up with a bit of borax. Got my mini smith torch which is attached to LPG gas and an oxygen cylinder and I've got the pressure turned up quite high on my regulator. Size 7 tip is good or a modified size 6 like me. And this could get smoky. Look at all that crap on top. Let's get rid of it. Some borax. Give it a good little shake.
cooking a little bit nicer. Doesn't hurt to have more metal than what you need. I'm going to put some more metal in just in case. It's always good to have about 10 grams more than you need. Give it a little bit of a swirl to mix that all up. Okay, let's cast. Oh, more than I needed. Way more than I needed. Look at that huge button. Right, so this flask might actually be quite warm because of all that silver touching it. The clay should be cool enough to touch at the moment. Right, flask is not too hot. Not yet anyway. It's getting there, I can feel it. Yeah, let's open it up and see. Cool, so there's a little bit of spillage. That's fine, we can clean that up on the bench. Another reason why this flask could be a little bit hot to touch is that the silver's actually touching it in multiple places. Oh look, the silver shot down the side there. So I have a little bit more to clean up than I originally thought. But I've got a cast bangle. And as far as I can tell, those stones are cast in place. Let me show you a close up. Cool. So I don't know if you can see little baby diamond. We've got these sapphires over here. More stones over here. So I can see already that these stones over in this section are a little bit more covered than I wanted them to be originally. So I might have to expose them by getting in there with my engraver. But otherwise that looks pretty successful. Alright, I'll clean it up and get back to you. So one of those little diamonds did move. You can see there it actually ended up inside of the bangle. Right there, inside. But I kind of like it there. I think it's a little bit cute. Like a secret little so stone set inside. So um, I'm leaving it there. And... I set another diamond where it used to be so I didn't put enough pawpaw on it obviously and it got washed away swept away with all that molten metal um, I've gone over these beads and tightened them up gone over them with my beater to tighten them up make sure they're round I've gone in with my engraver and I've removed some excess metal that was over the stones so that we can actually see these stones because some of them were pretty much fully submerged just means that i didn't push them down hard enough it's a very fine line between doing it too much and not enough sound funny but I need you even more Hey I'm embracing on the day you passed away If I'd have known I'd make that moment last forever and today Let's take a trip down memory 